Salutations, Scoob Believer. Do you have a dream of becoming an entrepreneur, but don't know where to start or even what to do? Where can I gather information quickly about what's in my zone of genius? Don't worry, Scoob Believers. I got you covered. Go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt and check out an amazing set of AI prompts that will give you ideas, information, and articles to help you get across that start line. Once again, go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt to get you started now. Good luck, Scoob Believer. To the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, the podcast where brand new entrepreneurs come to life and could quite possibly be discovered. Join me, DJ Scoob, and the rest of the Scoob Believers as we help these new businesses become a reality. And now, away we go! We now join DJ Scoob in the coaching of Chris Sparks, owner of the brand Fill in the Bee, already in progress. Over the next six months, um, my goal is to establish my first e-com brand or my first brand at all, my first venture into entrepreneurship. Uh This particular vision that I have, my why, if you will, is centered around spreading Uh, positivity in our communities. So the brand itself is, I would say, a very vocal brand in that um, it's statements, there will be affirmations, right, as part of the products, you'll see them on the products. Mm -hmm. Um, The name of the brand is fill in the B. It's a play on the words fill in the blank. Uh, And the concept is um, kind of, I I personally believe that even in, in today's world, more than ever, um, there's a real gap uh, for spreading or of, I should say, like spreading encouragement, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a problem. I, I don't like it. I just, it really bothers me. And I think sometimes, you know, we can spend our days around a lot of negativity, whether we realize it or not. And so my hope is to just change that ever so slightly or a lot. Um, yeah, through my, through my brand. Awesome. That's, that's very admirable. That's awesome. That's good. You're going to be able to do that and put that together. So exactly what do you have on your mind as far as what you're trying to accomplish? I mean, what do you have? What kind of questions do you have? What What's on your mind? Sure. Well, um, I mean, I think in terms of my strategy um, over the next six months, well, let's talk maybe even more near term. Um, I was just sharing today on my uh, TikTok uh, about some goal setting that I'm doing right now and in, in even the the methodology I'm I'm using, which is um, uh, something called OKRs. I don't know if you've heard of OKRs. It's an acronym. Stands for um, Objectives and Key Results, uh, and it's just simply a goal setting methodology. And I won't I won't go into the the weeds on that. There's been books written on that very method. Um, but suffice to say, near term, my goal for my business. Um, from a profit standpoint, is to generate six thousand dollars of take home income monthly. So okay. that is like a very tangible financial target. Um, and the way I look at that, right? If if I have basically, I've given myself six months since I lost my job, right, to get to that point. Now I don't believe it's going to take that long. I think I'm going to get there quicker. But I've given myself that amount of time which basically allows our family at then if we get to that to like barely break even. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, so that's why it's very, it's a necessity. I get there if I want to continue doing this full time. Okay. So as I discussed in my TikTok channel, my approach toward a- achieving that is really based on breaking down the overall goal of six, $6,000 into more bite-sized chunks. So the way I look at it is this as a lifestyle apparel brand, I'm focused primarily on drop shipping to start. And I can go into my reasons for going to that, uh, using that model to begin with, but I'm that's that's my approach. 
Um, margins in apparel and drop shipping are pretty thin. Um, mm-hmm. And so let's just say for um, assumption sake, I may generate $5 a profit per item sold on average. Okay. Some will be more, some will be less. And that that's prior to any marketing expense. Okay. That's just like cost of goods sold. Um, so if I can get $5 a profit per unit, I go back to that $6,000 mark. I'm going to actually, let's take a moment to gross that up. Thanks to uncle Sam. So let's, right. let's say we're looking at a thousand in revenue or I'm sorry, $8,000 in revenue. Mm-hmm. Again, just using nice round numbers. Um, I've already done this math earlier today. So I happen to know this. If you divide oh, that by yeah. five, it gets you to 1600. So that means I need 1600 transactions a month on my website, right? Mm-hmm. 1600 sales on average of $5 to achieve that. Well, that sounds like a lot and I agree, but let's keep going, right? This is the beauty of this process. Let's that break that down now from a month to a day. So again, I've done the math. It's about 53 sales per day. Now, if I was selling one product, people would really have to love that product. And I I would definitely need to be doing a tremendous amount of good marketing if I wanted to sell 53 of something per day anytime in in the very near future. Right. But we're not done. I'm not just selling one product. I'm not even just selling 10, but let's say I'm just going to sell 10 to make the math even easier. So now we need to sell 53 items a day. But if I spread that across 10 products, now I just need to find a buy five buyers for each product every day. So I no longer need to find 50 people who really love one thing. I just need to have five people who really love that thing, but I need nine more. If you see where this is going, this is what gives me confidence in my ability to scale because I simply need to continue to offer products that make sense for my brand, right? I'm not going to offer a CD player. It has to make sense. It has to fit the identity, but as a lifestyle apparel brand that wants to be out there, right? Um, there's a lot of things that fit. So that's my, I don't know. I didn't have a question, but maybe to give you more details, that's my approach right now. No. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I, I, I understand where that's coming from. All right. So from what I'm seeing, you you want to get your brand out there. Um, and I'm assuming the, the the brand basically is fill in the B. Is that is that what I'm – I want to make sure I got right. that right. Okay, that's correct. Great. That is the LLC. That is the domain. Um, the – the first logo, and I'll say the the first collection is going to be the Be Kind collection. Okay. Now, you might have a hard time visualizing this. Well, you certainly can visualize it in the way I can because I have the logos done and I'm working with them. But um, the what you're going to see, the prominent um, word mark is going to be Be Kind on the products for the first release, the first collection. Mm-hmm. So now if you think about scale even more, right? So be kind is just one phrase, one positive affirmation that I can use for my apparel. I can go from there to, I already have another 15 or so lined up, probably four that I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. I could be an example. I don't know if it's going to be number two, but be authentic is another one that I really like. So yeah. Okay. So from what I'm hearing is the 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 website, everything is drawn towards apparel for the fill in the B company. Correct. Is that, is that what's apparel what? and maybe stationary? Um, you know, I, I've I've created a um water bottle stuff like okay. that. Okay. Okay. So I I'm trying to put something together here. I'm trying to see you have a product, you're trying to sell the product, but how are you getting, how are you getting your people to the product? Okay. So fantastic question. I mentioned my TikTok account earlier. Right. So a little bit of a background. I'm 40 years old. I loathe social media. I have never used it. Last time I was on social media was in MySpace. Uh, Been there, done that. that. I'm with, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah. 
some of our younger listeners are probably gonna have to google that one yeah probably um, but i yeah so i i just it's been a long time but i i recognized of course in today's world if you want to launch anything um you have to use social media mm-hmm. um and so i i started using youtube um and i created some content and i found it to be extremely time consuming for the, the just the return wasn't there i i put in a you should, you can see the room i'm in right now in fact i'm just going to show you for fun. Uh, this was going to be my like youtube yep. studio i got mm-hmm. all this and it's like it really this room now is i don't even know what it is because with tiktok i don't have to worry about all that stuff so right i'm i'm now using uh tiktok i have to get to the brass tack so i created an account based on a friend who said you should give it a shot. The algorithm favors new people, unlike YouTube. She was right. Within the first 24 hours, I had made four videos. And I think combined, I had a thousand impressions or a thousand views. Um, That was about two weeks ago. As of today, I don't know where I'm at right now. I have around 350 followers. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, you know, a good portion, I would say half are family and friends or family and friends of friends. Um, I right. called on everybody I could. Um, but I'm not stopping there. Um, in fact, I don't have one to show you. I could go get one, but it may not matter. Um, I got TikTok business cards made. Mm-hmm. So there's a QR code. And I just, I like printed it out yep and i you know parking lots are packed right now right and so um i just grab a hundred i've done it maybe four or four times now and i'll do it again probably tomorrow um i'll grab a a hundred or a couple hundred and i'll just go on windshields and i'll just put one on every windshield and you know i don't know how much success i've had um with any degree of certainty but i know i have at least two people at least two who have followed and commented that they found me that way one of them um not only has the individual already been helpful to me but she happens to have twenty thousand followers okay so i'm out there doing what i can to build a network what's important to me though as i'm doing it is i'm not just looking for a number of people i'm truly trying to find individuals that care about the same things i care about because What I value is ultimately going to be what my brand values. My brand is very much a kind of a compilation of my life. So if I can, if if I can attract people that are going to, you know, I guess agree with my kind of philosophy of wanting to spread positivity in the communities and improve mental health and be more open about mental health and like attract those people, then, um, yeah, that's how, I mean, that's, that's my plan. Um, I don't, I'm not going about this, the, you know, I can read all these videos. I didn't start with my target avatar. I didn't, I didn't do any of that. I started with what was in my heart as cliche as that sounds. And I am, I believe with a lot of faith that there's going to be enough people out there that I'll find that feel at least similar enough to buy some, but yeah. No, sometimes that's the way you start, just with what you know and what's in your heart and where you want to go. A lot of the stuff, you know, that you're supposed to do can come later. I mean, go with what you know, go with what's important to you and just build off of that. And that's and mm-hmm. you're fine. That's that's a good way to go. Mm-hmm. I mean, what everybody are you saying? Some- I'm curious in terms of social media, what are you seeing now as the more successful strategies that people are using? OK, so I have a couple of different aspects on social media uh social media is good if you want to advertise on it that's great you should probably do it Uh, most of my audience is on twitter um i have about 1500 followers on twitter which is cool um but the, the problem with social media is you have zero control of who actually sees your product who sees your post anything like that it's all it all has to do with an algorithm that you need to figure out Mm-hmm. which always changes anyway. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you still want to have one. You still want to have to put it somewhere. And that's cool. I get that. But I think a better way to do it would to do something called starting a email list. Okay. Okay. So getting 
an email list put together of a certain amount and then selling off of that email list is going to be a lot more effective because you know for a fact those people that are, you're sending emails to are actually going to receive those emails. So putting up an email campaign after building an email list I think would be a lot more beneficial for what you're trying to do. It does take a little bit more time than, you know, putting out a social media blurb, of course, mm-hmm. but it's going to be more effective once it's all built out. So is that where I, I basically create a landing page and send people there to subscribe to be like on an email list? Is that, yes. is that how that works? That's how that, exactly how that works. Uh, I actually use a company called ConvertKit. And uh, they've been very simple for me. And uh, the way that they put their email campaigns together, there's a lot of templates and a lot of easy ways to do it. And then basically what I would do is a, a, a five email introduction, basically, where you get a first intro email, then three value emails, and then a sales pitch. Hmm. So what happens is you you introduce them. Hey, thank you for joining my email. Here's your whatever it is. You want to give them something of value for for thanking them. Uh, Could be just a quick PDF of something. Could be a a video of some kind of, I don't know. It it depends. That's up to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. And then three different value emails. Hey, this value, 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 value. Hey, since you're still, you know, since you're here, I do have this available. I only have a hundred of these available. Would you be interested in getting, I'm just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. Something like that, Mm -hmm. I think would be, would be a little more effective than just working on uh, social medias. I like that. No, I appreciate that suggestion. And and in fact, it leads me to another question. Um, You know, so where I'm at right now with my website, I'm learning, I've had to learn to do this on my own. And I, shouldn't say I've had to, I've chosen to um, not hire somebody to do my Shopify or uh, well, anything other than my logo. Mm -hmm. Um, So at what point do you know, like when you have, when you're ready to make a website go live? So like, I'm trying to decide, do I need to have an email list? Do I need to make, do I need to have do I need to make certain that I'm going to have so many buyers right on that day? Or, I mean, this is just my own domain. It's not an Amazon listing I'm putting up like right. where I think maybe that there's an, there's an algorithm there. So like, yeah, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Like, is there any harm in just kind of putting it up and letting it slowly evolve? Do you have to make a website? No, I don't think, I don't necessarily think you have to have a website but you have to have a landing page. Now, ConvertKit will actually make a landing page for you to go to. So that's actually part of their package is making a landing page for you for you, for you to send people to so you can get that email list going. Um, and then after that, it's really up to you. I mean, do you, okay. you, you obviously have your product somewhere for people to see. No, 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 no. Okay. I mean, this is all – it's all um, – Greenfield, what do they call that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's brand new. Now I'm at a point where I have. So yeah, let's talk about like, like where I'm at. I'm not ready to sell anything just yet. I have, I'd say, probably 15 items uh, linked up to drop shippers on my website. Technically active. If I today just lifted up the password, you could go and buy one. Um, what I haven't done is order any samples and I will not sell anything until I've personally received it and just checked it out. Um, and I'm getting close to doing that right now. I'm, I'm kind of exploring a few different drop shippers and making sure um, I'm getting like, before I order from one, I'm like, let's say t-shirt. Okay. Um, I want to hopefully order the sample from the drop shipper I want to use for t-shirts. And right now I'm still comparing a couple drop shippers just on the basis of who's going to provide the best shirt. Um, or and or the best price. So, okay, well, that's something you need to figure out on your own. I can't help you with that, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. But you, I mean, you just mentioned you said a website. I mean, what is that exactly? The domain, you mean? Well, you said or, you had your you you have a website that you can open up to yeah. for people to look at, right? Yeah. So, Correct. what is that? Where did you get that? How did that come about? 
Okay. Um, so, I mean, I acquired the domain mm-hmm. fillinthev.com. Um, once I decided on that name and that name, by the way, was, it was a very iterative process to get there. Like anything, once you're there, I'm like, Oh, it's perfect. But it, it, you know, I had five other names I wanted, or I thought I wanted before it. Um, anyway, so I bought the domain, which really doesn't do anything except for gives you access to it. Um, Shopify is really where the majority of the, the work is done. So I created a Shopify account. Um, well, actually I shouldn't say that. Um, let me get, so I'm using three tools really to create a listing or, or work on my website. I'm using Shopify, I'm mm-hmm. using Canva, and I'm using Gym Pages. Uh, it sounds like Gym Pages may be somewhat similar. I, at least I know it also creates like instant landing pages. We, I just haven't explored it, but I know it's a feature that they promote. Okay. Um, my time right now, I have created the an initial draft of like the FAQ, the privacy policy. I found some great content, um, free content online. Um, I was able to repurpose that. And, and other than that, I've been focused on products. So my actual product listings and making sure those look good. So to do that, I basically, I go to Shopify, right? I find a drop shipper I want to work with via the Shopify uh, website. It links, it links you up. Mm-hmm. I then explore their catalog, find a product that I think might fit my brand. I then use Canva to take one of my logos and make sure it's the right size for that product. I upload it to the dropshipper's website via, again, all connected through Shopify. It's beautifully right. connected. It's like one seamless experience. And I move it around, play with it a little bit, decide which colors I want of that product. If there's variants, sizes, et cetera, typically I'm choosing most everything. Although I have noticed some interesting um, uh, increases in expense on some of the outliers and sizes, but um, yeah, that's the physical process. So from there, once I've chosen the product, I upload it to Shopify Mm -hmm. at that same time, while it's uploading, I've got another tab open. In fact, they're both open right now in the background. (laughs) The other tab is gym pages. Mm -hmm. And now that I've got one product done, it's a very simple process. I duplicate that products page and I make the necessary edits for that new product. And it's really it, it, it's really slick in that when I duplicate the page and I name it with the new product I just added, all the images and the variants flow through. And all I have to do is then change my bullet points and change my description, which I'm basically taking from the drop shipper and adding my own flavor, right? So they, they even give you that. Um, after you do that, you, you really just... Hit, make it active and, and as far and as I go. know and now I haven't I haven't gotten to that point yet so right we'll right see. okay so is there a way because you're, you're going to end up spending a lot of money and time on this it sounds like I mean it, it's going to take a lot of work and not a lot of, of that kind of thing so is there a way that you can actually test your products before you actually open up to sale can you can you think of any way to do that so I've heard um, of doing targeted ads, particularly on Facebook, but I presume this could be anywhere, where you show pictures essentially, right? And you're mm-hmm. seeing, you're measuring like click-through rate, right? And I, I haven't gone into the details, but conceptually, I kind of get it. Um, and that's also a great way to A-B test if you have multiple designs. That's so, what I understand, but I haven't really explored any of it. I try to stay away from Facebook ads if possible. Oh, really? There's personally, it's a lot of money that seems targeted, but uh, who knows? Who knows really if it's actually if they're actually doing what they say they're doing? I mean, it's Facebook. What are you going to do? Um, I've heard pros and cons in both. If you want to just try a little bit, like a quick five dollar deal, and see if it works for you, great. Just don't spend too much money on it. What I'm thinking is if there's a way you can get some people to the uh, Shopify site and actually measure if they click on something and then it says that it's out of stock. So that way you actually get a click on there and you can read there's a click on there, but you don't have to ship anything because it's out of stock. You see what I'm saying? But at least here you're starting to get ideas of what people are actually clicking on. So you can know what you're actually concentrating on when it, when you actually open up the Shopify for other 
for the other parts. So like if, if you notice there's a lot of people clicking on this particular T-shirt, you know mm-hmm. you have something. Mm-hmm. If you don't see anybody clicking on this particular mug, for example, yeah, you don't want to concentrate on that. So yeah. this way you're actually testing the different products that you have out there to see which ones will work for you and which ones won't. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So, so I don't know if, if Shopify has that or not. I've I've heard some other places do have that, but I, I don't have – I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have a whole lot of experience on Shopify. Um, but if there's a way to test clicks on the on the Shopify website um, – Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Do it. Yeah. It does make sense. I do, yeah, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. So that's something to think about too. Um, if you want to go on to social medias, if you have something visual for somebody to see, I would actually suggest Pinterest. Okay. So Pinterest is basically used for visuals, photographs, pictures, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. things like that. My daughter is actually featuring some um, uh, dolls that she builds from scratch on Pinterest. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, it, she's actually getting some look-throughs for it. She's literally just getting started with it. But I think of all of the other types, if it's something that's a, a paste product that's not going to move and move, do or anything like that, Pinterest, I think, would be a good place to kind of take a look at. Okay. Yeah, I will. I will do that. I also haven't. Yeah. It's another yeah. one of those accounts that I've never signed up for. So I'll have to look into it. Give it a shot. Play around with it. See if it will work for you. But a lot of people that look for products that are beautiful or have some kind of, you know, meaning to it, people are going to go there. Sure. So is there anywhere else you think your audience might be? Yes. And I mean, in terms of that's another kind of scale thing. So. Obviously, my own domain driving traffic there is one thing, but I don't know what the crazy or statistics are about Amazon purchases. But obviously, if I had, if I, if I could get my product there, and ideally, I could use Amazon FBA. And I don't know how much you know about Amazon FBA, but it's they basically fulfill it all. They do all the fulfillment and shipping logistics, which just like drop shipping, right? So the beauty of of the both models is it it scales really well and doesn't like whether I sell a hundred or 10, I don't do any more work. Right. Right. Which is, is my goal um, in terms of scale. So yeah, Amazon, they actually have now what they call a brand registry. They will give you your own storefront. Um, Again, though, I, there's so much I need to look at there. That's one Etsy is another one that's popular. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, who knows where this goes? My, my that was you know. So I kind of told you short term, six months. Let me just briefly kind of share my say twelve to twenty four month vision. Um, ultimately, two years from now, I want to have the opportunity. I want to have two options. I want to have the opportunity to exit the business for a reasonable multiple, so that I can move on and build something new. Or um, I want to have uh, available capital to really invest in try and expand dramatically from wherever I'm at at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, it's going to be one of the, one of the two I'm not, I've spent 20 years in my life running businesses. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really have much interest in running the business. I'm really, really excited about creating something. I want to make a difference. Um, but once the train's on the tracks and moving well, I, I, I suspect I might just want to go and do it again. So anyway, that is, That's my exit strategy. That's my plan. And it does matter because how I approach things today certainly um, change a little bit, right? Um, Based on that. Okay. So basically what your goal is to start this business and then hand it off to somebody else for a profit. Ideally. Well, I don't know if that's ideal. Here's the, here's the thing. And and this is where I'm, this whole process, I have, have had to be very adaptable, right? Things change quickly. And I'm, Mm. I'm, finding myself comfortable in that space. This is, as I shared earlier, this is a bit, this is like a passion product for me. So I could see myself not wanting to let go entirely. I could see myself selling um, like a steak, but somehow still having, you know, 
influence over brand identity or can somehow control. I don't know if that's feasible, but I think hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I, I may have a hard time walking away completely. The only reason I would want to exit is so I can go do something new. It wouldn't be to walk. It wouldn't be because this was so bad. It's just because I think I may prefer to spend my time doing it again. If that, if that makes sense. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So, God, where would I go with this? It's, uh, I've never had to put together a, an exit strategy before. So I, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that particular part. Really what I can help you with is, is getting started and then you taking from there and, and some other types of things to help you. Like, for example, have you ever heard of your zone of genius? No. Okay. So you, your zone of genius. Okay. Okay. So your zone of genius is basically the one thing that puts you into that happy space and you're there as much as you can all the time. For example, my zone of genius is uh, podcasting and editing because mm -hmm. I love doing both. Mm -hmm. And anything else that's not in that, I'm, I try to either hand off to somebody else or I just find an automated way to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So finding where your zone of genius is would, I think, would be beneficial for you, especially when you want to figure out where you want to stay in your business when it gets going. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good point. So there's a book called The Big Leap that I always suggest to anybody that hasn't heard of the zone of genius or you know wants to find their zone of genius. You could also listen to my episode 25 of Undiscovered Entrepreneur. And I do the four questions to find your zone of genius. There's a lot more in the book, but that's just a quick synopsis of how to do it. Okay. Um, and that will give you an idea of where you want to be. If you do hand it off, you want to hand off things you don't like doing, hand off things you're not good at, but keep the things that's in your zone of genius. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. I got plenty of things I'm not good at. So. Yeah, me too. Trust me. There's a, there's a big, big list. Um, uh, as far as finding people to do that for you, sometimes you can uh, do uh, VAs, virtual assistants. Sometimes you could even find uh, interns to do. Have stuff. you had much success with either of those? Um, I would probably go with interns first because that is where I can actually physically help somebody else um, accomplish a goal. And yeah. which is really what I'm really into is helping other people accomplish goals. After right, that, right. I haven't really l literally searched for a VA myself, but there's a lot of good companies out there that will help that can help you with that. So okay. um, when you're scaling to that point, that would probably be the quickest and cheapest way to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So building your, I, I'm glad you came up with the two year thing because Building yourself backwards from that two years is how you're going to find where you're going to start. So having that goal and then, okay, to get to this goal, let's talk like three months before that. Where do I need to do to that goal? Right. Let's talk three months before that to get to that goal to get that. So you build yourself down to where your start line is and now you have a path for yourself. Right. So I, I'm glad that you have a goal for yourself, not just in the six months, but in the two year. Absolutely. And I think it's the, you know, I talked about this um, again on a, an, another one of my TikToks, but I think traditional goal setting um, creates some artificial limits. We create limits on ourselves that I don't think we need to. And, and the example of that is, you know, most people, at least, you know, if you've worked in corporate as long as I have, you've heard that a goal is supposed to be SMART, which is an acronym. Mm -hmm. it, it, among other things, uh, specific, um, attainable, those are like two. Let's just stick with those two for a moment. And in my mind, when we start from that perspective, we immediately start to list, maybe not in, on paper, but in our heads, all of the constraints, both real and potential that we may encounter along the way. We're so scared of setting a goal that we may not meet. And so we end up setting one that's like within our comfort zone and marching towards that. To me, that doesn't, I don't like that. And it doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's where these, what I mentioned before, the objectives and key results come in. It's a different methodology, but 
But you start with an objective, which is supposed to be aspirational. It's supposed to be something that you may not get to, right? And so that's where when I start from that of, hey, I want to exit the business in, in 24 months or grow it. Like that sounds crazy uh, when you think about I haven't even made a sale. But like, why not start there, right? Mm-hmm. And work towards that. Then like, I could say I just want to sell 500 units a month next year. And then I could get there and be like, yay. Yeah, right. <laughs> or or I could aim for what I said, only sell 2000 a month. I'd fall short of my goal. But who got the better outcome? The guy who made his goal at 500 or the guy who fell short? So anyway. Even if you have that big goal, even if you fall just short of that big goal, you're still accomplishing something. Right. So like, even if I only sold 400 But that's 400. I mean, it didn't get to my goal instead of like the 50, like the one that I could probably reach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that makes that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, you mentioned the uh, the genius. um, What'd you call? I have the big leap. What'd you call it? Zone zone of genius. Zone zone of genius. Yeah. Um, Kind of related to that. It occurred to me that. You know, that question you get in whatever high school or a teenager, you know, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? Oh, yeah. Um, And, you know, most kids when they're young say, you know, Superman, a lot of them want to be in service work. I'll be a police officer, a firefighter. Um, But I think. Oh, like when I I don't know when, but at some point, probably in my 20s, my answer to that. I found it and it's always been there, which was, and it sounds similar to yours and that you like helping people. Mine was, if I had all the money in the world, I would invest, I would be a venture capitalist, basically. Basically, I would invest in other people's businesses to help them grow. Like that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. And, um, and here's the thing. I'm actually living my dream. Like I, I truly am. I know that sounds crazy. Right now it happens to be my company I'm investing in, but like, this is it. Like this is, this, this is the destination for people, right? And fortunately for me, it's an active journey, but this is all I've ever wanted. So I hope I'm in my zone. Um, I feel I'm in my zone. When I'm doing anything related to working on this business, it does not feel like work. Mm-hmm. I can stay up to all hours of the night and um, it just doesn't feel the same. I would still tell people, you know, when my mom asked, well, how much time are you spending working on the business? I say, well, when am I, when am I not? Like, what do you call not working? Because if it's, if thinking about it's working, then I, I mean, I miss exits on the highway. Because right. Oh yeah. I've done I can't that. even focus on driving. So anyway, but it just doesn't feel the same as the 20 years I've done in corporate. That work felt a lot different and yeah. not nearly as satisfying. Yeah. So if, if you go into that book, it will definitely help you in, in finding, narrowing down even more what your zone of genius could be. Cool. Which is really neat. So that's why another a book I would like you to take a look at is one called Will It Fly hmm. by a gentleman named Pat Flint. And what that does for you, and I think this would be beneficial for you too, it tells you how to test your ideas before spending too much money and time on them. And it gives you a structure of how to do that. It also gives you a structure of how to word things, how, a little bit about SEO and how that works to mm. drive bi- drive business to your website. I don't know anything about SEO. Yeah, and I don't either. All I know is what's in that book. And that's really, yeah, okay. you know. Okay. Yeah. So, but it gives you some great strategies on how to do some research on like keywords for your company and, and that kind of thing. So great. Um, I think that would be beneficial for you too. Okay, I'll definitely check it out. And you, I think... If you want, if you have the time, yeah. uh, actually putting a podcast together about your company would would be helpful. Talk to, you know, it's it's interesting because I, I want to help people, as I mentioned. And part of what I my journey here, one of the things I'm doing is I'm not I'm trying not to pay for any courses or anything. Mm-hmm. And and along the way, I plan on at some point providing an accounting for people of how much I've spent along the way. I want to be very transparent because I, 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 it's not going to cost a lot of money to get this thing going. It's really not. And I think a lot of, a lot of people feel like they can't do it. A lot of people feel like they need to pay thousands of dollars for these mastermind courses. 
I just, it, it really, it upsets me that so many people feel blocked by that. And so to your point about a podcast, if, if I could, if I could serve people in that way and maybe help them pursue their dreams without feeling like they had to do that, I'd like, I would do it in a heartbeat. So how does that work? Tell me about it. It's, it's actually the barrier to podcasting is very, very low and very okay. inexpensive. Like what we're doing right now, you could turn that into a podcast. It's very simple. If you want to talk about what you're currently doing in your company and how much you're spending and that kind of thing, that can be a podcast. I mean, it's very – and then what you could do is as you're building your company – you could advertise your company in your podcast. You can make your own commercials and say, hey, you know, blah, 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 this, this, this. You'll start seeing people want to follow you because you have a, a very noble cause for your for your company. People are drawn to that. Sure. So I think talking with other people that have similar causes to you as, as guests, talking about your experiences, what you're doing, um, things like that would actually make a – pretty good podcast and then all you have to do is is record it you can even record it on a zoom like we're doing right now and then the sound bite will you can download onto your computer and then t put that in a server it it right up front it sounds real difficult but really it's not because if i can figure it out anybody can figure it out okay i'm so technologically dumb it's not even funny that's but, how i feel about things so yeah. you're in good company <laughs> but following following like okay so pat flynn is the guy that taught me how to podcast Okay. And he did it for free because I watched YouTube videos of him podcasting. Yeah. Okay. So it didn't really cost me anything to get started. The The microphone I have here, it was a hundred bucks. You can actually get some a little bit cheaper than that if you want to. And then uh, uh, there is a editing uh, called Audacity. Are you a PC or are you uh, Apple? Mac. You're Mac. Okay. So uh, GarageBand. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Okay. Free, so you right? can actually download that sound by into GarageBand and edit it just like it's a music. Ah. Okay. And almost the exact same way. Okay. And then use that. Now I use a company called Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is a company that you basically download your sound by, sound or your podcast into their server and they distribute it out to all the podcast companies. So oh, like Spotify, cool. Apple, iHeartRadio, all of those, they distribute it out for it. And I cost me... 18 bucks a month. What's it called? Buzzsprout. If you want, I'll send you my affiliate link so you can take a look at it. Yeah, yeah do that. I might as well, if I sign up, I might as well use your affiliate link. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you want to do that, I'll send that to you. Um, so that's and then do you do any advertising for your podcast yes. or has it all been kind of organic growth or like? Uh, no, mostly it's been or organic growth and just advertising on uh, uh, Twitter. Okay. So just like, hey, I got a new episode, boom. And then, you know, I'll throw some other stuff in there too, just so I don't sound overly salesy about my podcast. Sure, sure. So, yeah. So I think getting an oh, audience. I, I like that idea. Yeah, gaining an audience with a podcast, uh, gaining an audience with your email list, like we talked about in the beginning, um, or even like directing those people that are listening to your email list. You can do that too. Okay. Um, it sounds like, do you, do you have a YouTube video kind of YouTube channel? Sort of. I sort of is a good way to put it. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm I sort of have one too. Earth. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. I, I, uh, I just don't really put much effort into it. I think it's, it's at desperate dad. Unfortunately, somebody had the desperate dad, which is what I am on TikTok. Um, but yeah. Well, you can even change it to what your company name is. True. Especially if you're able to get the dot com. If you got the dot com, there's probably a good chance that nobody has that name on YouTube yet. Because a True. lot of times the first thing we'll do is find a find a dot com and then go over to YouTube and get the YouTube channel. Mm, makes sense. And then now, since you have that, you can actually use the same video like we're doing now throw it on YouTube and now you have a YouTube channel of the same stuff that you're talking about on your podcast. Cause that's what I do. Ah. Reusing the content the same content that you get mm -hmm. saves a lot of time and a lot of energy. And then I can cut out like certain areas in the, in the video and turn it into a TikTok. 
Oh, okay. So there, there's ways to be able to take a piece of content and change it around and, and use that same content in different ways. Uh, I can take the transcription of the, of the, um, of the podcast, throw it into my website and that'll help for SEO. Ah, makes sense. You can make, it'll be a blog, right? So you set it up as a blog on, so anybody that checks anything, this blog will can, could possibly come up and point them to your website. Cool. That's really neat. So just being able to take that, take that content into different ways, I think would be beneficial for you too. Um, If you want help doing that, I can help you, you know, put that together. If you have any questions about how to do it, uh, follow the video. The Pat Flynn does have some courses, but I was able to start my podcast without courses just by watching his free content. Why not? No, that's, that's like I said, I, so far I've been able to learn a lot with people. Thanks to people like you who don't charge anything to have a conversation or put together, you know, people put together quality content for YouTube and yeah, it's been good. All right. So what else you got going on? Is there anything else that you want to discuss? I mean, I've pretty much covered a few things I think would be beneficial for you to do. Um, Is there any other questions that you possibly might have? Um, You know, not really. This is, I've never done a a podcast interview. So I, I, uh, I came prepared to talk, but I didn't, beyond that, I didn't come very well prepared. So sorry, I don't have any questions in mind, but yeah, I'd love to connect in the future and um, I'm happy to um, hopefully do another episode and tell you about uh, the wild success that Phil and the Bee has been. Well, what I've been doing is uh, when it comes to coaching, especially is I'd like to follow up in about a month's time with another interview just to see how far you've come along uh, with the suggestions. And if you've made any changes or anything, I'd really like to hear about it because I like following people's stories Yeah, yeah. and uh, and go from there. And just see how sure. it goes. No, that sounds great. That sounds great. Yeah. And hopefully uh, I'll have made some progress in some of the suggestions you gave me. Absolutely. That's what I'm hoping for. I want to see some progress for you. So what are, give me uh, give me three takeaways from what we've talked about. Well, the first one that jumps out to me, like three things I'm definitely going to spend some time on before uh, if we talk in a month before we talk again. One is a landing page. And I'll probably have that done in the next 48 hours Uh, (laughs) because it just, yeah, I don't think it's, I think I can get one done. I might as well. Right. So I think hopefully I'll get that done quickly. Um, I might, I probably won't read the entire book, but I'm definitely going to look into the genius zone. Um, I said that right. Yeah. The the book of uh, the uh, big leap. Yeah. But the, the name of it, it was the genius Uh, zone zone of zone of genius, zone of genius, zone of genius. Better write that down. Okay. So that's one. I I wrote down the name of the book, but I was just being honest. I'm not going to read the entire book. No, it's okay. You know what you, you know, um, there's a guy that I interviewed on my podcast and he's a really famous, uh, entrepreneur named Cliff Ravenscraft. Now he, what he actually does is when he reads a book, as he's reading, if something inspires him, he puts the book down and does it. So he he told me in my in my interview, he has like 52 books that he's in the middle of right now because every time he reads something, he puts the book down and goes to accomplish it. I, so don't, don't feel I like you that. have to finish the book to go go do something. I mean, when you see something, do it. So so it's so funny you mentioned this because I, I had a put out a TikTok video yesterday and on my the five lessons I've learned in the first couple of weeks of entrepreneurship. And that was absolutely one of them, which I, I, the way I um, posed it was doing is more valuable than learning. And where I'm at now is I learn just enough to take the next step. I don't, I don't learn anything more than I need to make progress. And then I make progress and I make progress. And then when I get to something and I go, like SEO or like landing pages or like anything. I go, okay, well, I guess I'm going to learn how to build a landing page tonight. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, but I will look at the zone of genius. And then I, I think you asked for three. Pinterest is probably the other one that really caught my attention. Um, yeah. So I want to explore that a little bit. Um, if nothing else, I think I might be able to get some product idea inspiration there. 
Mm -hmm. um, looking for other kind of people doing, you know, positivity affirmation brands. Cause one of the things is I'm trying to figure out is, you know, like, actually I'm looking, there's a pillow, a pillow might be a good thing. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what fits what I'm trying to do. So, yeah. So no, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and, and all your advice. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll send you another calendarly. And if you want to just look at the next month and pick out a, a, a day. Perfect. And we'll get together again and see how, see how it goes. What is, uh, what is your, uh, your TikTok again? At the desperate dad. The desperate dad. Yeah. And that's the best way to find me right now. I know there's not a lot of people on TikTok. And if you don't have it, I would never ask you to download it for me. But that for now, at least until I expand, that's the best way to find. Me. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to go ahead and follow you on TikTok. I got one too. Thank you. Hey, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. Exactly. Right. And <laughs> if you have any questions for me between, you know, now and, and the next interview, like something pops in your head. Hey, what about this? Have you heard of this? Whatever. You go ahead and message me. I appreciate that. And uh, I'll answer whatever. I can help you wherever I can, okay? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, so you take care of yourself, okay? You too. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the coaching edition of The Undiscovered Entrepreneur, brought to you by Doing It Today Coaching. If you want to get across the start line, contact me, DJ Scoob, at doingittodaycoaching at gmail.com. Say the words, do it now for a free two-hour discovery call to see how I can help you in your entrepreneur adventure. Art and graphics by Elaine Wilson. Audio video by Brian Briggs of Ocean Tree Creative. And hosted by me, DJ Scoob. (laughs) Supported by my Patreon, Brian Briggs. Click links in the show notes below for more information. And always remember, I can, I am, I will. And I'm doing it today. As a worker of two full-time jobs, running a podcast and coaching, every minute counts in my day-to-day. It's hard to be consistent in any of my social medias. And at this point, I cannot hire a social media manager. Pinnacle AI to the rescue! I've been using Pinnacle AI for a couple of weeks now. I've seen big improvements in my outreach and consistency in all my social medias. Do you want to save time and increase your productivity too? Go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI for more information. Save yourself time and grow your brand. Try it now and see what it can do for you.